Tiruvalluvar, the second century BC Tamil poet, while defining greatness once said, all beings are the same in birth, but work decides their varied worth. The next few minutes are dedicated to a man who through his hard work and dedication rose high to achieve greatness and to claim a piece of space to his own name. Dr. Avul Pakir Jainulabdeen Abdul Kalam. He was a guru who has shaped up my uh, professional, both technical and managerial capabilities over the years. He is a great dreamer. He unleashes the potential of people. I think everything about him is unique. Born into a modest family of a boatman, this small town boy came out of the narrow lanes and by lanes of the sleepy coastal town of Rameshwaram to soar into the sky like a bird. While in his fifth grade, Kalam's teacher, Shiva Subramanya Ayar, took the class to the seashore to explain the aerodynamics of the bird's flight, thus igniting the mind of his young student. What should be my goal of my life, what should be the, my aim of my life was seated there on, on that day. That's why afterwards I took physics as my special subject. Then I took aeronautical engineering, the engineering education. Then I became a rocket engineer. As a rocket engineer at ISRO, Kalam's significant contributions started with sounding rockets which flew payloads from India and abroad. While materializing sounding rockets, Kalam got absorbed into the field of composite materials, which led him to develop a fiberglass motor case for the SLV, and ultimately to the birth of reinforced plastic center. In my uh, opinion, the aspect of space research, which I would like to stress most, is in relation to the national capability, the self-confidence that this will generate. My father Vikram Sarabhai's dream to build India's own satellite launch vehicle propelled Kalam. As project manager, he designed, developed and operated the overall SLV system. The, the problems uh, in building uh, such a multiple uh, complex uh, launch vehicle system is uh, mostly the type of uh, the management, one, year, one side, another side, the technology development. You know, when, uh, when we started uh, the project SLV-3, we had the experience of building only some small rockets. And practically no country or no laboratory will come forward to our assistance. So it's virtually a learning by oneself. Along with this, he also designed the composite fourth state structure of the vehicle. This particular task called for a number of innovations in the field of fabrication technology and saved India billions of rupees in foreign exchange. Years of hard work, innovation and development culminated into the four-stage SLV-3 rocket and the satellite payload. SLV-3 is the beginning and we will be, once it is successful, we will be joining uh, major uh, powers uh, who are in that field. This SLV-3 rocket with 44 major subsystems and 1 lakh components was successfully launched on the 18th of July 1980 as it injected the 41 kilogram Rohini D2 satellite in the 371 by 861 lower Earth orbit. The success of SLV-3, in the same breath, also injected confidence in ISRO's capability in indigenously building satellite launch vehicles, which later culminated into the evolution of PSLV, which was later chosen to realize India's prestigious moon mission Chandrayaan-1. Besides the five Indian payloads, Chandrayaan-1 also flew six more international instruments demonstrating international cooperation and exchange of ideas, information and knowledge. Uh, chairman Indian Space Research Organization gave me a presentation uh, when they were in the design stage. Then uh, he simply asked a question, uh, how do you establish yourself that you have gone to the moon? I didn't have an answer. At this stage I said it would be a, a good uh, 
he land a moon uh, moon prob a uh, moon payload so the whole idea of the mip evolved from there and uh, within a very short span of time we were able to uh, develop a system which could fly along with the chandrayaan and finally deposit our national flag on the surface of the moon on 14th of uh, november last year kalam as director drdl took over the responsibility of developing the guided missile program of india he initiated the development of ballistic missiles making india self reliant in this field and allowing her to safeguard her sovereignty and security defense research was a highly guarded secretive work never shared with many other people outside he first broke that barrier the academicians they took interest in india's defense programs and then many of them maybe small teams some 10 15 teams they started working enthusiastically and that number is increasing as advisor to the defense minister dr kalam led the strategic missile systems floating projects such as the light combat aircraft and supersonic cruise missile brahmos a joint venture between india and russia one of the first decisions he took was to start a, a spin off program by which certain important technologies which are developed in the defense sector they have to be used to develop uh, some societal uh, spin off projects as a technological spin off nizam's institute of medical sciences nims in hyderabad used the lightweight carbon compound developed for the agni missile to make lighter calipers for polio affected patients a visit to one of his colleagues undergoing cardiac treatment introduced kalam to the field of the heart stent he formed a team of doctors and engineers to indigenously develop the stent and thus the kalam raju stent was born the government of india honored kalam with the padma bhushan award in 1981 with the padma vibhushan in 1990 india's highest civilian award the bharat ratna was conferred upon him in 1997 Dr Kalam has the unique distinction of receiving honorary doctorates from 30 universities and institutions and is a recipient of several other awards and fellowships from many other professional institutions. Very first paper he picked up was my prognosis from Mayo Clinic that my life expectancy was less than 2 years. So Dr Kalam threw up the paper he says what are we going to do i said sir i will last your tenure and during each year of your tenure i'll do an anthology now five are done dr kalam has penned his thoughts and shared his visions in books authored by him his books fills one with enthusiasm and is a source of inspiration to everyone with yes we can do it especially wings of fire signifies hope and victory against obstacles His mission in life now is to ignite young minds for national development so as to fulfill his dream to see India emerge as a strong, prosperous and happy nation. As president of India and also thereafter, Dr. Kalam is tirelessly propagating the notion of prosperity with the application of science and technology. If uh, someone comes and tells how they have used the distance education technology or somebody has used telemedicine he becomes so happy it looks like an artist whose work is being appreciated by somebody else that kind of feeling he has dr kalam's world space vision 2050 presented at caltech in an aerospace conference celebrating the 50 years of space technology has evolved through interaction with many national and international fora the focus should be how the low cost access to the space you bring down $20,000 to $2,000 then you go reusable launch vehicle number of time you can use second area i have indicated that we must join together international community it's very costly affair for space program of every country third thing is space security because our asset has increased and the international space security force will evolve to guard all the space assets his message to the world space community 
is to take up space missions to find solutions to the global concerns of energy, water and mineral resources. Space or solar power satellite is one of the beautiful idea and uh, to realize that one you need uh, very big uh, spacecraft, space systems have to go to the geosynchronous orbit. That means the, it's a multi-nations cooperation is very important. Dr. Kalam's suggestion to the global space community is if you have knowledge, let others light their candles at it. We cross nations and uh, uh, we share knowledge, we, uh, we share human power, uh, we share intellect and above all, uh, we share our experiences. As the Aerospace Historical Society, in collaboration with graduate aerospace laboratories at the California Institute of Technology, prepares to pay tribute to a legend with the 2009 International von Karman Wings Award, Dr. Kalam joins the August Company of Eminent Scientists. Uh, so I am uh, indeed delighted. Uh, I will be very delighted because uh, uh, von Karman is a, is a legend in aeronautics. Uh, so many concepts uh, we have uh, von Karman's book uh, we, uh, we have used and uh, so he is a great foundation for aeronautics. To go back once again to Thiruvalluvar's words, great souls when their will is active do mighty deeds rare to achieve. Country wanted him to be a great scientist, nurturing scientific talents in this country. I think he has achieved that. Uh, he has a passion for the well-being of the humanity. It's uh, well beyond the borders of India. He looks at the globe as his uh, arena. A toast to a man who dared to aim big. A celebration for a man who was tested by failures and setbacks to be later rewarded with grand success. Let us applaud the journey of this man amongst human beings, from a newspaper boy to a rocket engineer, a technologist to an aerospace pioneer, from the one-stage Rohini rocket to the four-stage SLV-3, from the import regime to self-reliance, to international cooperation, to space-faring global communities. From the insignificant streets of Rameshwaram to the corridors of power, as the 11th president of India, the darling of the masses, the people's president. From an insatiable student to an inspiring educator, a youth icon, a visionary, an all-time learner, a nationalist, a patriot, and a humble humanitarian, Dr. Abdul Kalam.